Good morning. It is 10 o'clock, and welcome to Lincoln Wear Live. Of course, we're here every Sunday morning from 10 until 11, and we always have great guests for you. Today, my first guest, Assistant Fire Chief from Reading, Officer Kim Flotting. And then on the second half of the show, we've got the money lady, Michelle Graves, and she's going to tell you uh, if you're in trouble or not with your 401k, your uh, your IRA and any other savings you have out there. She'll tell you whether you what you should do or what you shouldn't do, if you should panic or should you climb up on the roof and jump off or not. We'll have all that information for you coming up on the second half of the show. You don't want to miss that. Stick around and we'll give you all that information. All right, first cold. This was a real cold morning this morning. I know everybody's turning on their heater without checking it out. They just want some heat and... Um, that may not be such a good idea before you check things out. Carbon monoxide, you've got all types of issues. You need to change the filter. A lot of things you need to do before you blast that uh, heater up for the season. Absolutely. And welcome uh, to the show. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and speak with you this morning. Uh, it's real important as we get into the, the heating season now that, that people uh, spend some time to get a technician in to check their furnaces. Uh, check the hot water heaters and those things that they're going to be used for heating over the winter time to make sure they're functioning properly, make sure that the chimney is clear if they're going to be using their fireplaces and that. So this is a, the perfect time to have that all done. Now, uh, uh, what, what about the carbon monoxide uh, detectors? That's very important because you hear every year you're going to hear cases where uh, families are overcome with carbon monoxide and uh, it's a silent killer. Absolutely. So you need a detector for that. Absolutely. Carbon monoxide uh, is a, a leading killer of families, especially in the wintertime, uh, and it's very preventable. Um, carbon monoxide detectors, you can contact your local fire department in your area, and we have a partnership with the American Red Cross to provide these carbon monoxide detectors free of charge for your home. And so if you don't have one, you can contact your local fire department. They'll set you up with a carbon monoxide detector, and then you can have some protection against it. A, it's a colorless and odorless gas. Uh, and so with a detector, it's going to protect your family. Uh, now, where should you put those? Should you put them down near your furnace or upstairs where in case, you know, there's a leakage? You know, before. Right. If you only have one, we suggest that you place it somewhere near the bedroom area. When you go to bed at night, your senses are, are dulled, mm -hmm. and so the detector will act as your, your nose to check for the carbon monoxide okay. detector. If you have more than one, we would like one by the bedroom and then one in the area near your furnace okay. or, or whatever, your hot water heater. So it depends on how many that okay. you have. But okay. we want it to be able to wake you up in the middle of the and night. So for people who live in Reading or Forest Park or places like that, just go to your fire department. Anywhere. They should be in able the to city help. of Cincinnati, just stop by your local fire department, uh, ask them for a carbon monoxide detector or smoke detectors. Again, they're provided uh, by the America Red Cross Force at no charge to the citizens. Uh, we just take a few minutes for you to fill out a form mm -hmm. so we can see how many people get those, and it's provided to you at, at no charge. All right, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come right back and talk more about detectors and what you can do to prevent to prevent any type of uh, tragedy in your home. Uh, you've got the smoke detectors here, uh, mm -hmm. and the same thing works, same rules apply to that. They Absolutely. can get those free also? You can get those free at any local fire okay. department, uh, again, through the Red Cross. Uh, we, uh, in the city of Reading, next Saturday are going into the neighborhoods and going door to door to pass these out, and we'll even install them in your home if you don't have them. So we'll be in a couple of the neighborhoods next Saturday going door to door to do that. Now, what about the fireplaces? How do you know when you need your fireplace? Uh, you know, you get these chimney sweepers out. When do you know yeah. if you need that or not? It's a good idea if you haven't had any service done to your, your chimney and your fireplace in the last couple of years to go ahead and contact a, a company that can bring a chimney sweep out. Uh, as, we, as we burn different materials, it, it, it pro, uh, provides creosote and other things that, that adhere to the inside of the chimney. And if you haven't had it serviced in the last couple years, it's probably a good idea for them to come out and check it and just give it a good cleaning job. All right, we'll take a break. Then we'll come right back and uh, we'll talk more uh, about fire safety here since the weather's starting to turn cool and everybody's uh, turning on those heaters. We'll be right back with more information in just a moment.
And we're back live. Lincoln Where Live is the program. We're here every Sunday morning. And, uh, of course, we'll be here till 11 o'clock. Second guest coming up in just a few minutes, Michelle Graves, the money lady. Tell you about your money and the stock market and, and uh, any other questions you might have. I want to ask uh, the assistant chief, uh, uh, what about space heaters? A lot of people use space heaters this time of year. Yeah, and we're, we're concerned with that, especially, you know, with your second guest going to, to talk about the economy. You know, the, the cost of heating your home is going up. And, and so we're concerned about the use of, of space heaters. You can use them if they're vented properly. And if they have uh, an underwriter's uh, laboratory label, it'll say UL somewhere on that heater. That's an acceptable heater. The biggest thing is to make sure that you have uh, place it in an area that's not near combustibles and there is good ventilation to, to use to so it doesn't uh, overheat and or I create any problems. Cut off automatically after, after the, so long. The, the newest ones, uh, they also have a safety feature if they were to be knocked over that mm -hmm. they automatically turn themselves off and that. So you want to make sure that it, it's a good reputable company that, that, that manufactured it and it has that underwriter's label, uh, label on it. All right, the phone number is 513-381-3838 or 651-3838. The area code is 513. If you've got questions about fire safety, uh, we can answer those questions for you this morning. Uh, and and, and you, you talk about the electric space heaters. Well, some people have these little gas heaters. Mm -hmm. uh, what's up with that? Yeah, the, uh, those, they scare the hell out. Yeah, of those those are are, are very uh, can be very dangerous, especially if you refill those inside the residence and that. So we really like to discourage the use of those unless it's a, 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 a yeah because because even even though it's a, a combustible liquid, um, you have to be real careful with the use of that that you're not filling it while it's still heating and, and can can set the the kerosene and that on fire. So it's it, those are are, can cause real problems for us. Now, when we had the uh, outage from uh, uh, from the hurricane, you know, mm -hmm. all the wind, a lot of people bought uh, uh, generators, and if we have a snowstorm, we may be without power again. Right. Tell, they cannot oh. turn the generators on inside the house. That's what you tell people. That. I can't believe a, people do that. That's the biggest problem that we had. Um, I have some, some friends that are down in, in Florida uh, that are firefighters, and, and they talk about when they have the hurricanes come through and people use their generators, that they wind up killing many of their citizens due to the carbon monoxide put mm -hmm. off by the generator. The generator is designed to be used outside of the house, uh, not in the garage. And the concern that we have as it gets colder that people aren't going to want to go outside to right, refill it or right, whatever. So right. they'll put it in the garage or whatever. And, and it really needs, if you're, you're going to use a generator, it needs to be located outside. It needs to be a few feet from the building to where it can get, get good get ventilation. Extension cord. Right. And yeah. it's no different than, you, than your vehicle. You know, mm -hmm. now that we're cooling off, a lot of people like to start their car in the morning yeah. to, to heat it up. And the problem is that they don't pull it out of the garage when right. they do They'd that. Say, we'll just open the garage door and then the exhaust will go out. But that exhaust hangs around in that garage. Abs absolutely. And then when you close the door, then you've got those fumes it's in your It's there house. and then it comes into the house. So if you're going to start your car up to warm it up, back it out of the garage and leave it in the driveway. Don't leave it in the garage because a, a vehicle is a major producer of carbon monoxide. All right, let's go to the telephones. Uh, let's kick things off with Mary. Mary, good morning. How are you? And I'm all right. What about you? Uh, I guess I'm all right because I'm right here. If I was any better, I'd have to be a twin. <laughs> well, you're looking handsome. <laughs> well, thank you. I I don't understand why. Okay, I have I've been in this house 40 years. My furnace. I got a new furnace when I moved here because my husband he 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 got it because he didn't trust the old one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I got this furnace that's been here 40 years, like I have, I guess. And um, I don't understand the, what could be wrong. Why I didn't have no uh, detective then. Why do I have to have one now? Nothing happened. Why well, do I, although my son put one in because they keep talking about it. Well, so things he, wear out. Things get old, just like you. You probably don't work the same way you used to work 40 years ago, do you? Well, yeah, I work better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
But you do, you know, when those... Uh, yeah, we all wear out. I understand that smart. Well, well, hold on. We'll let the chief uh, explain that Thank to you. Him. Absolutely. <laughs> the furnaces, even even newer furnaces, uh, you know, they're, they're man-made pieces of equipment. Something can always go wrong with them. In the older furnaces, uh, as they continue to heat and cool over the seasons, and that oftentimes the heat exchanger could wind up with a crack in it. And it may have worked perfectly fine for the first 15, 20, 30 years, but it only takes one crack and a heat exchanger to start putting out the carbon monoxide gas. So it's a good idea to get it serviced and to have the detectors there in the event that there is a problem. There you go. All right. Thank you, Mary. 513-381-3838. That's our number. Uh, we're talking about uh, carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors. Uh, what about children? At this time of year, you always hear about children playing with matches. Absolutely. I don't know, it's something about when the weather gets cold, they really get crazy when it comes to matches. Well, and, and, and parents oftentimes don't help us there because they leave those uh, things lay around the house if they're using it to start their, their fireplace or they have candles. We saw a lot of candle usage during the, the windstorm and the power outages, and the parents will leave those laying around. We go to the schools every year to talk to the elementary students to, and we discuss with them the use of matches. And the fire is a good thing if it's used in a correct way, but can obviously also be a bad thing. And so we press upon those kids if they find matches to give them to their parents and have the parents put them away. All right, let's go to uh, Tania. I think that's Tania, is that correct? Hello? Tony, Tania, Tanya? I guess they're not there. What was her name? Is that the correct name? Tonya? She's not there. Okay. But anyway, yeah, the kids are a main problem. Plus, keep them away from the heaters also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kids, you know, just inherently are inquisitive, and, and if they don't know how something works, they want to try and figure it out. And that's so the parents have to be real careful that if they're going to use devices like that, that they instruct the kids on, on how to, to play and work around them properly so we're not getting anybody injured this year. All right, I uh, want to thank you for joining us. Once again, people can go to their local fire department and pick up the uh, CO detectors, the smoke detectors. Very important this time of year. Absolutely. And uh, we want to cut down on, uh, you hear these news stories of uh, carbon monoxide uh, fumes overtaking families yes. in their sleep. Entire families can yes. be wiped out yes. overnight uh, if they don't have a uh, CO detector. So Correct. that's very important. Yes, it is. Thank you, Chief, for stopping by. Th thank and you It's for always good me. to see you. And people, if you're watching in Reading, just stop by the uh, fire department and Absolutely. sign up, and they'll get you a detector. Yes, we you will. So you're going door-to-door -door also. We're going door-to-door -door next Saturday at uh, 10 in the morning in a couple neighborhoods to check on their smoke detectors and provide them smoke detectors or CO detectors if they don't have them. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, joining. sir. All right. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk to my good friend Michelle Graves, the money lady. We'll talk to her about your finances with the stock market going up one day, down the next, and it's just going crazy. 401ks are going berserk. It's unbelievable. Back in a moment. Lincoln Wear Live is the program, and uh, we're here every Sunday morning. This morning, my guest, Michelle Graves, the money lady. How you doing? Good to, good to be here this morning. I, I tell you, money has been in the front page of the headlines for the past uh, couple of weeks, ever since the stock market yes. took the big crack, the 401ks, the $700 billion bailout, yes. and uh, people with 401ks are... I, I opened mine up and looked the other day, and I just, you know, I didn't know what to do. It I was know. just heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. To see what it was going on. Uh, what do you suggest to people who are near retiring, and they may have to hold up a couple of years now? Well, and what shape would we be in if they had, you know, Bush wanted to take our Social Security and, and put it in the, yeah. It. Oh, yeah. Where would we be now if that had happened? Very broke. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Very broke. So Very what's broke. the situation? I mean, what well, should... You know, um, we go back many, many years, and I've been saying a song that people don't want to hear, but this thing is upon us, and it is real, and it's not going to reverse. We're heading down. And uh, despite what um, the media spin may be, I do not believe as an economist and banker for 30-plus years that we're in a situation right now that is turnaround. 
We've got a lot more adjustments to make on the downside. A lot more money is going to be lost as if we haven't lost enough. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose more. Well, you know, the stock market goes up one day, down yeah, the next. But, What's but, up with but, that? But the bottom line is that the, the, the trend is down. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You have blips up and blip, blips down. The, the analogy I give is a, uh, a dying dog which is uh, he's wiggling a minute and then another minute he's flopped over. But the basic trend is down. And of course, uh, the prevailing sentiment is that this thing is going to turn up. I, uh, I'm not prepared to speak on that. Um, because there are two different hypotheses on this. One of them is that the stock market can come down and then it can belly and then it'll itch its way back up. But there's also another uh, sentiment that the stock market plummets and then it just levels at the bottom and that's called an L. So uh, I tend to be more of an L person right mm -hmm. now because I do believe that uh, things have changed fundamentally forever for the United States of America. Wow. Yes, I do. All right, 513-381-3838. If you've got questions, call them in right now. Michelle Graves, the money lady, is with us. And uh, you're having a free seminar coming up uh, yes, I am. Uh, when this week? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday of this coming week. I'm doing a seminar for people who lost money in mutual funds, variable annuities, stocks, bonds, um, IRAs, rollovers. Um, most people got their statements last week. And they probably were hemorrhaging. And so I'm doing a free seminar, but registration is required mm -hmm. and seating is limited. They can call uh, my 800 number. And we've got that number on okay. the screen right now. Thank you. 866-411-7432. That is correct. There is no charge for the seminar. However, reservations are required. There mm -hmm. will be no walk-ins and seating is limited. So I encourage people who lost money, and I know a bunch of people did, and truthfully, you're getting ready to lose some more money. Well, tell me this, you know, they always talk about the stock market, buy low, sell high. So now the, you know, stocks are low. Sure, Is it a good time low. to buy some now? Well, I might, you know, Lincoln, I don't, they didn't call me the money lady blowing money. I don't like to lose money. I don't like to lose my money. I don't like to lose uh, my clients' money. And my position is that I'm prepared to, 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 to go safe mm -hmm. and smooth rather than take risks. Most people are not really prepared to lose money. Oh, everybody likes to talk about the stock market, but you know, um, in my young career, mm -hmm. I was managing a portfolio of a half a billion dollars in my early 20s for a major, major insurance company. And I tell people, if you think you can play with the big boys, you are so not right. Mm -hmm. um, they are in and out of the market. Uh, they have people that are trained to know when to go in and when to go out. I tell most people today, your best strategy is to save every dime you can get, mm -hmm. get out of debt, uh, be nice on your job, <laughs> because, yeah. because, oh no, employers are cutting back, and, mm -hmm. and, and the ones that are trouble, troublemakers are going to be the ones that are going to be out of a job. Yeah. And to begin to come back to some basics, um, CNN took a poll a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and the poll found that 59% of Americans, the majority of Americans, think we're heading for a significant depression. Wow. And oh yeah, those are the, the facts from their polling. I think Americans are right. I think we are headed. And in fact, I'd even be um, um, so much bold to say that I think we're in the middle. Right now. I, absolutely. Now, absolutely. Before we go to the telephones, people are calling in. And uh, let's see, the only lines that are available now are 513-651-3838, 651-3838. You can jump on those lines if you want to uh, talk to us, 651-3838. Now, do you think we're going to eventually get to a one-world uh, uh, monetary system? I mean, they call in all these world leaders, having all these well, meetings. Uh, do you uh, think we'll have one I, I think, currency I think, throughout the world? I, I think th that indicators suggest that that is the path that the world is on. And I think that given the volatility, see, during the last Great Depression, uh, it was just the United States. But now, 
everyone is tied in to the yeah. United States. Right. Iceland filed bankruptcy. Uh, Russia is having troubles. China is like this because, Japan. oh yeah, Japan. And, and, and this, these are major things that did not happen mm. during the first Great Depression in 1929. So I tell economists, I tell bankers, I tell other peers, how can you continue to compare us to the last Great Depression? because it's a different world mm -hmm. and I think that it's a global community today right, right. and so we're gonna see some things changing rapidly alright let's kick things off and uh, go to the telephones let's start it off with Karen and I uh, want to remind everybody turn your TVs down if you're on hold to get on the air turn your TV down and just listen to the telephone Karen go ahead how are you uh, good morning Lincoln and good morning Michelle good how morning. are you fine um, my question is I'm and have invested in stock and the international uh, stock funds were doing quite well and I see them slipping now and um, you were on his radio talk show I think it was Thursday or Friday mm -hmm. and you mentioned that small capital funds are really going to significantly going to drop That's what cool. do you uh, suggest that you group all your money in guarantee uh, funds or just pull it out altogether? Well, that's a loaded question because I am a um, financial and investment advisor, and my question would obviously have to be are you, uh, is this money that you are setting aside for retirement? Yes. Okay, so you're trying, and may I ask your age? Uh, I am 52. You're 52, so you're trying to get ready to retire. Correct. Well, I will have to tell you, given the, the extreme volatility of the market, um, that probably the most logical um, place to be right now is to move your money into a uh, interest only or cash position, okay, which could be money markets, uh, U.S. government equivalents or um, some type of a guaranteed interest only account. May I invite you to my seminar on Tuesday? I'll be talking about that. Uh, what time is your seminar? Uh, the seminar is Tuesday morning from 10 to 12 noon. Oh, I work. Oh, I'm so sorry, but you know what? You can always email me. And yes, I did get your email. Yes, you can address. always email me. And uh, you can always, I do follow up on all my calls, and I want to apologize to your viewers, Lincoln, because I have a backlog of 52 emails mm -hmm. that came from your show. And, and folks, I have been swamped, and um, <laughs> I'm a very popular woman right now, <laughs> but I will be calling back today everyone who has called in and emailed. Continue your emailing. I do handle each person uh, individually, okay? All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for your call, Karen. All right. All right. Uh, let's go back to the telephones. Uh, Tina, good morning. How are you? Tina. Tina's doing exactly what I, I told know. her not to do. Okay. Latanya, hopefully you're listening to your phone. Yes, yes, I am. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Um, I'd like to say to Miss Grace, uh, God bless you. You are a blessing. I'm not into financing or anything like that. And just by what's going on in the world, and if we... Uh, those of us who understand and probably studied and know that this was to come anyway. Yes. But um, I'd like to know, what kind of advice do you have for a person that, that's not really making a lot of money but would like to get involved in? What, are, what, what, should, what advice do you have for a, a small-time person? Well, I will tell you one of the things I had the opportunity to uh, stay in China for a very limited season, Shenzhen, China, which uh, where I was a trader and uh, five years ago. And I'll tell you about the Chinese people, which I found to be extraordinary. And that is that they work during the day, but at night, the whole place, since 15 million people where I lived, uh, the whole place comes alive with small business people. Uh, carting around their little kiosks and selling everything from bootleg purses to bootleg videos to bootleg anything. But um, they do not count on their primary job to create their opportunities. And I encourage um, people that are viewing, if you have a skill or a talent, then uh, make it profitable. If you know how to make cakes, 
There are a lot of people that will buy your cakes if you make good cakes. If you uh, have a specific skill set, consider doing your own little business and uh, making extra income. This is what makes America such an extraordinary place because people can realize their dreams. You don't have to be a multimillionaire to be happy and to have your own destiny. So that's my recommendation. Consider looking at what your talent sets are and your skill sets are and what you love to do and what your passion is and, uh, uh, and make that happen, okay? Let's take one more call before we go to break. Uh, Sammy, how are you? Good morning. How you doing? Uh, fine, and you? I, I'm, uh, kind of, I was just like, I got my statement the other day and I was in shock. I bet you, <laughs> you know, were. Uh, I, just a, a week before the, 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 the market went down, I bought, took some money out of my retirement mm -hmm. and uh, my uh, stocks and all. And I got my statement, and them figures is always, it's always, it's, it's messed up. Now, what should I do? Should I uh, continue to leave my money in my stocks or take what? it and put it in a uh, savings account or CD or what? Okay, I guess first thing she needs to know is what do you have your money? Is it a 401k or what? What do you have what? your money in? You, are you involved in mutual funds? Are you involved in, uh, what, are you, what are you doing, sir, and how old are you? I'm 57 years old and I early, had to early retire. Okay, so you took early retirement right. and you're 67 or 50, 50, 57 years old? Right. And you put your money where? In a uh, stock with a... Uh, uh, I had some in the RA. I understand that. Yeah. Well, I, but, but see, th this is why I am I'm forced to do this seminar, because I'm talking to people like you, sir, every day who have no idea where they put their money. They listened to somebody on a telephone who told them to put their money in this or that. They never had a face-to-face. -face. They never looked at what their risk profile is. If you're having a heart attack about losing money, then you are obviously in the wrong accounts. So well, you need to look at that, and like I said, I would invite you to come to my seminar. Okay, my, my, my account is in with the Hartford Fund. With what? The Hart, Hartford Fund. Okay, but again, those are mutual funds, and they all have different investment objectives. It all depends upon your risk profile and what kind of risk you are willing to assume. I don't know your risk profile. Right. That's something that I'd have to sit down and talk to you about and find out what kind of money are you prepared to lose. Most people found out they don't want to move, lose any money at all, which is my position. Me I don't either. want to lose money, period. So as a result, my clients have been involved in very specific investment objectives, and they, none of them have lost any money. Right. I don't get any phone calls. I'm not going to get any phone calls. But in your particular situation, as I said at the beginning, and as I said a month ago and at a year ago, that now is the time for you to be moving your money into cash positions or moving your money into uh, investment envi environments where you cannot lose your principal. Right. Okay? Okay. All right. Hey, Sammy, thanks for your call. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and take more of your calls at 513-651-3838 or you can call 513-381-3838 and we've got Michelle Graves with us. We'll be back in just a moment. We are back live. Lincoln Wear Live is the program. My guest this morning, Michelle Graves, the money lady. And we're talking about your stocks and finances, retirement. And uh, uh, the one lady called in, she was 52. And I guess she wasn't retired yet. But I guess you need to be, should you, is now the time to become conservative if you're 52? Uh, yes. Or should you be, should yes. you just say, well, I don't have much time. I need to make more oh, and no, take no, more no. of a risk. No, no, no. You, at, at 52, now I'm, you know, I'm 56. I'll be 57 this year. I'm not, I don't have the stress capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't open up a, a, a bank statement and see all my money going. Mm -hmm. Because I, when you're older, things just are different. Mm -hmm. Young people, and, and that's the wonderful thing about being young. You can do stupid stuff and rebound right, right. And, and work it out. But as you get older, things change. And as I tell people, I don't lose money. End of story. I'd have to sleep at night. 
I can't be waking up like this, okay? I have recognized, though, that um, most people will be working much longer. Yeah, yeah. They will not be retiring, and this is why I share with people this is a great time in life to look at doing your own business. Nothing grandiose, but just taking, uh, taking your own uh, skill sets and beginning to do some things to earn you some extra money to live. Because it was a profound see thing seeing that in China. They all work their own businesses. All, all right, 381-3838, 651-3838. Tina, good morning. How are you? Tina. Oh, dear. We got these people. Good morning, Lincoln. How you doing, Tina? I'm going to turn my TV down. One That's, moment, please. I've been telling you to do that the, the whole time. Good morning, Ms. Graves. Good How are morning. You? Um, I have a question. I heard that... Um, about a year and a half ago, President Bush was already in closed doors with the president of Mexico, uh, these other um, countries, Canada and Mexico, and he wanted to merge our economy. Yes. Um, how true do you think that is? And if it is, do you think uh, we'll become just, like you said, one economy? And if we do, where are these people putting their money? They're telling me they're taking them out of the banks and put them in other banks offshore, but I thought that all the banks were in trouble. Well, um, we're in the middle of an international financial tsunami. And I use that term because two years ago I coined that term and the media picked it up nationally. But a tsunami, if you know anything about it, and you can Google and type in tsunami, and you'll get a more um, a clear explanation. But a, a tsunami, you don't even know what's happening until it hits. And when it hits, it hits fierce and it hits violently, takes everything it hits and sucks it back out into the ocean and it disappears and everything is just level all over again. And what is happening now is that we are watching this wave come in. All of the indicators are in place and as I tell people, it's definitely coming. You're not going to turn it around. All of the conditions are ripe for its coming. What you can do is prepare yourself uh, mentally um, and spiritually and financially to be a survivor. Uh, the days are gone where people are going to be looking at their stock market accounts. They're going to be looking at their checking accounts. They're going to be eating home a lot more. They're going to begin to spend time with the families that get on their nerves because you won't have the means that this last economic period allocated. Now, I firmly believe that as a result of this and the international catastrophe, in the United States, American consumers make up 70% of our gross domestic product. Internationally, we make up 20%. Some countries are totally dependent upon us, such as China, and they're going to be impacted. I do believe that um, the political mandate is going to require that countries come together and unify so that they don't all go under. Now, relative to your question about why, where are people putting their money, well, I will tell you categorically that what we are experiencing right now is a net withdrawal of deposits by European banks from our banking system. Whoa. And that's been going on quietly, undercover while you're sleeping. They're moving their money back home because they do not have confidence in our banking system. So I share with you that uh, these, are, these are tumultuous times and that you have to look out for your own well-being. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks Thank for you. your call. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, they're telling me we need to take another break right quick. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's, let's take another call first. Let's go to Harry. Harry, how are you? Hello. Hello, Lingaware. How are you doing? Pretty good. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask the uh, money lady a question. I have a... Uh, I think it's a money market account, but I can draw off of it by check. I am 60 years old, and you know I'm worried about retirement as far as that goes right now. Uh, but I also work for the federal government. I'm wondering, should I invest that into a retirement fund with the federal government or just leave it as is? You're talking about your thrift plan with the federal government? Yes. Okay, now you do know the wonderful thing about all thrift plans is that that is tax-deferred um, earnings. 
Okay. And you can always beat the market if you're involved in those kinds of investment vehicles. Oh. Okay. Yes, always, because remember, you're earning on a pre-tax um, basis, and your earnings potential is always greater. You can move your money. Uh, I'm, I'm not, again, very familiar with all the intricacies of your thrift plan today, mm -hmm. uh, but I will tell you that all of them have interest-only accounts. And I would say to you that you could always do a little better by putting your money in a tax-deferred environment. Okay. That's, okay? That's good. That's All right. Good. Thank you so much for your inquiry. Thank you. Hey, All right. Thanks for your call. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, take a break, and then we'll come right back. Lincoln Wear Live is the program. Michelle Graves, the money lady, is my guest. We'll take a, a break and come back and take calls from Denise and Bonnie and others at 651-3838. 3813838 back in a moment. Back live, Lincoln Wear Live is the program. Uh, we still have a few more minutes left with Michelle Graves, the money lady. So if you want to jump on board, you better do it right now. 381-3838. 651-3838, the area code is 513. And of course, uh, you can watch us live online at WBQC.com every Sunday morning. If you know someone that lives across the country and they want to watch Lincoln Wear Live, WBQC.com. The show is streamed live on the internet every Sunday morning. All right, let's go to Denise. Denise, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. I have um, a question. How do you redistribute wealth in a capitalist system? Limit, um, with great limitations, <laughs> because the capitalist system is never designed uh, to, quote, redistribute wealth. Uh, that's socialism. And, and see, that's what McCain is saying that uh, Obama is trying to do. <laughs> well, you know, I, I ain't touching it. All I'm going to say to you is that this last bail bailout was to make sure that that very small group was secured. Would we also under redistributing, would we see an increase in benefits in unemployment benefits? Uh, would we see more money going into um, welfare programs as redistributing wealth for the middle class? Would we see a tax abatement or a rollback on our property taxes? Is that the mechanism or means in which they use to redistribute wealth? That, that is not entirely correct. You're okay. talking about it from a political redistribution. Mm -hmm. Be but again, this is a capitalist system. And this is an issue I've talked to people about for the last 37 years. I've been an economist and I've trained in many, many economic systems. But I will tell you that politics determines how tax revenue gets redistributed. C politics does not ever address the issue of who controls capital. And that is the issue of the hour. Okay. Okay? And I really want American people to understand that because when you're in the stock market, you're in a playground where capitalists play all the time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Americans got involved and, and, and played and got burned really bad because most of the gains in the market have already been taken and they're now on to something else. Okay? okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks for okay, your call. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's go to Marie. Marie, how are you? Fine, how are you? Pretty good. Thank you. Uh, basically, I'm just calling right quick because I was listening to what you were saying as far as people taking their talents and just, you know, trying to do something with them. And I have an idea that I think uh, would really take off. Um, however, it may seem silly, but it's just... Do you want to tell us and tell, tip everybody else off and somebody might beat you to it? <laughs> no. Okay. No, I'm not worried about somebody else getting getting the idea and running with it. My concern is once it, you know, should it take off the way I hope and anticipate, um, other the, the people that I owe money to, creditors and that sort of thing. Is there a way where they could just you know jump into those you know into the the, the money that I start making from it before I'm able to come to them and say, all right, look, I'm in a situation where I can you know, start paying everybody back. <laughs> let, know, me, so let, me tran let me, without overriding you, and I do appreciate you calling in, let me share with you, if you're having credit challenges, 
in the marketplace, and a lot of people are. They're losing their homes. The next big tsunami is the credit card crisis because everybody started charging the things on their credit card since they couldn't get home equity loans or they had tapped out and values had fallen down. But I'm going to tell you, if you are worried about creditors seizing your bank account while you start your business, is this what I'm hearing? Uh, basically, yes. Okay, well let me tell you how the game works. Okay, as a banker, I'm going to give you some insider information. Okay. If your account has gone bad, over 120 days delinquent, mm -hmm. that account is sold off to a uh, as a receivable to a collection agency. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you can always negotiate anything from 80 cent on a dollar, as low as 10 cent on a dollar, depending upon how long this debt has gone bad. So if you have tanked out, just be patient and unplug your phone when they call. <laughs> okay? And then when she, she can and make a deal. When she has make, when you have the yeah. ability. I did a lot of this for senior citizens because a lot of senior citizens uh, got into debt, got into all kinds of things. And basically I'd negotiate 20 cent on a dollar because they can't garnish uh, social security checks. I mean, they try, but they're not supposed to. And so I'd negotiate with seniors uh, on behalf of senior citizens to get some help because that's very stressful. But in your particular case, uh, and of course this has nothing to do with what I do, it's just one of the, some of the things I do to help people. Uh, you can do the very same thing yourself because you're working with a collection agency, you're not working with the bank. Because remember they sold the receivable off. Right. So whatever collection agency gets is money in their pocket. So it behoves you to accumulate your money and work a deal. Okay? Okay. Thanks for All your right, call. thank you for calling. Thank you so very much. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, now they're talking about uh, it's going to be hard for people to even get car loans. Of course. So, I of mean, course. What, a, what will a person do? That I guess they'll have to have, you know, triple A credit well, to even get a car is, if Lincoln, they're able to do that. Lincoln, it's over. <laughs> slap, 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 slap. Wake up! So now maybe okay. little buy here, pay here well, places will do booming. Well, it's not even a buy here, pay here. It's business. called save your money. Mm -hmm. It's called the way our parents did it. People weren't running out buying cars every two years. Mm, right. A car was a significant purchase. They saved their money. They bought a car. Mm -hmm. There are, are whole new markets. You can buy cars on eBay if you got cash. Mm -hmm. So cash is going to be king. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because the flip side of that is who wants to buy a car that's worth very little two years after you right, bought right. it and you're still financing a car mm. that is just not worth much. So you say cash is king. Cash is king. All right. Let's go to uh, AC. Hey, uh, Brother Lincoln. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I just wanted to call and say to your guest, yes. she is a wealth of information. And she is most informing on economics. Yes. And she ought to have a TV show. Because <laughs> she, uh -oh. hey, she really de delivers, and I yes. really feel what she's saying. And well, that's why person, I have her here. That's why I a, have her here, AC, because hey, I know. They need, a, they need a mind like hers in Washington so bad. Oh, no. Maybe hey. she can be on Obama's cabinet. That's right. She <laughs> oh, should be Treasury there. Secretary. And I just want to congratulate her. Cause she, oh. Hey, she really does deliver. And that's all I want to say, Lincoln. All right, AC. Okay. Thanks for your call. Let's I appreciate go to, that, by AC the way. AC thinks the world of you. I, I think that. Hello, Hi. how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Pretty good. What's on your mind? Well, I have a question for the young lady. And I wanted to know when collectors call you, and harass you about debt that you owe. Can't you contact the actual person that you owe the money to instead of trying to select some type of deal with the collectors? The, re, remember I said when it moves into 120 days delinquent, the loan is banks don't carry bad paper, except for mortgages. <laughs> they sell them off to collectors in bundles. And uh, the collection agency buys, they bid and buy all this bad paper, and then they try to make good, and they begin to call you. It's a machine, and if one collection agency isn't successful, they'll sell it off to another agency, and, and it begins anew. You can't call the bank because the bank doesn't own the 
particular debt any longer, sir. They're done with it. They're done. Mm -hmm. it's, it's over. And so you are stuck with that collection agency. Now, the law says under the Fair Debt Collection Act that they, if they're calling you, you can demand that they put everything in writing mm -hmm. and that they do not call you. You make sure you talk to a supervisor and you get that information. Uh, in place where they have to communicate by writing. But it, it is a process and it's not a pleasant process because their job is to get money. Their job is not to figure out why you didn't pay the bank. So maybe a, a good uh, uh, a job to have is uh, you, you work and you go in and for people and you call these people and make deals that's what you I, that's used what to do. That's what I did, but okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't charge seniors to do that because yeah. I was just devastated by the number of women whose husbands died, uh, and the wife was stuck with yeah. the bills. And so right. I just did it. I didn't yeah. do it. Uh, but, you know, you're right. Somebody could do it. Philip, I got to go. All right, thank you. Thanks for your call. Okay, give the information on your seminar again. Okay. Because we only have, um, like, less than a minute. Okay, Tuesday. This coming Tuesday from 10 to 12 noon, I will be doing a seminar called Surviving Your Financial Tsunami. It will be at the Essex House in Roselawn, 7600 Reading Road. There is no charge, but reservations are required and seating is limited. You can call me at 1-866-411-7432 to leave your telephone number, best time to call. I'm going to get back with everybody today and tomorrow. i got a long, long list of callbacks. So thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle, for, for joining me, me this morning. Uh, you yes. always, uh, like thank AC you. said, a wealth of information. <laughs> and uh, uh, good luck with the seminar. Thank you so much. And I'm sure before all this financial uh, crisis is over, we'll have you back again. Thank you so much. That? All right, that's going to pretty much uh, wrap it up for me today at 3 o'clock on It's 38. Oh, yeah, that's right. We need to take a break first, then I'll come back and wrap up, okay? Uh, right here on Lincoln Wear Live. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Michelle, you got me. I'm thinking all these numbers. Back in a moment. Live, Lincoln Wear Live is the program, and of course we're here every Sunday morning from 10 until 11. Spread the word, tell a friend. And of course you can check me out Monday through Friday from 10 until 2 on 1230 WDBZ. Coming up at 3 o'clock this afternoon, Canadian football, Hamilton uh, versus, uh, uh, let's see, Saskatchewan or whatever they call that team. You know, the Canadian football team, yes. And if you want to see a rebroadcast of this show, you got to tune in to WOTH Channel 25 tonight at 8 o'clock. Channel 25, WOTH. Then tonight at 9 o'clock, professional English soccer, Bolton Wanderers versus Blackburn. Uh, that's tonight at 9 on Channel 25, WOTH. Don't forget, you can check us out live online at WBQC.com. We stream the show live every Sunday morning which is great. I love it. Don't forget to tune in next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for Lincoln Wear Live right here on It's 38. Spread the word. Tell a friend. See you next week.